What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to Stocks by the Numbers and today we're doing another installment of my personal series of how'd I do, let's review where I go back, we hold my feet to the fire, we see if I made the call right, if I got it completely wrong, we misread a chart, or if we missed a p potential fundamental metric that obviously we need to incorporate in our strategy moving forward to uh, you know be more successful here but name of the company we're looking at here Lordstown Motors Corporation ticker symbol RIDE listed here on the Nasdaq stock closed three dollars and twenty cents down eight cents two point four four percent on the day up a couple of cents here after hours um, basically another feather in my cap got this one right now I know I do get some wrong occasionally I've been wrong on the uh, I made the video talking about NVIDIA. That was the first one that I got wrong. Uh, as of late, I was incorrect on Palantir since apparently you guys felt that, uh, in my opinion, an already overvalued stock should, can, should go up even further and basically double from where it was. So now, in my opinion, it's even more overvalued. But, you know, again, we win some, we lose some, but as you guys can see, if you're around, even in the Discord on the short-term calls, I'm getting more right than I'm wrong. So, again, th you know, this is what I'm saying. If you're right 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10 times, and if you can really limit your downside on the ones that don't potentially work out, you can be severely successful, even in an uncertain volatile market like this one that is up at times when we feel it should be down, or... It begins to sell off when we believe things should be, you know, working out and remaining steady and stable for us. But basically, Lordstown Motors. So again, this was another EV startup company. Uh, last time we looked at the stock, it was all the way back here. Now I know it's showing like thirty dollars, but the company just did uh, one for fifteen reverse stock split. So the stock was like $2 at the time. And as you can see in the video, I even mentioned that uh, it can run up here in the short term and potentially pop out of like a little wedge, a little descending channel that we saw. And uh, it could pop up to the top of the trend line and have a little bit of a breakout. But then everyone will take profits and it will most likely come back down. And as you can see, that's essentially what happened. Took the stock up in the short term just a couple of weeks off of this BS earnings or whatever it might have been. And uh, as you can see, the stock ran up from like 30, I mean, at the time too, but, uh, you know, now ran up to, yeah, $49, $55. And then what happened? Hit the top of the trend line, rejected, and then everyone and their brother took profits. Look at this, down to $22, $23. That is a massive decrease, right? So that's the problem with a lot of these stocks. You have to be in and out, and you can't really be a long-term holder. And I really don't have to tell you guys that because I'm sure, unfortunately, you're feeling the pain here in this one and you can see just how much if we back up all I mean you know this is an all chart here you know there's nothing going on there's nothing going on at all this is a five-year chart this is going back to you know this is like mid tail end of 2020 I mean you know just look just look at this stock right and again if you did get involved, you know, if you push the buy button and you've been holding, waiting for something to happen, again, just because it was an EV stock or someone somewhere told you it was going to be nice and work out well, listen, don't beat yourself up, okay? We, we've all been in that situation. Well, you know, even something like this, listen on the NASDAQ, we've all got caught up in something like this, whether it's a, a company on a major exchange or if it's even just a random penny stock that was trending one day and we read some hot stories. So, you know, we threw a couple of bucks into it and, you know, now just absolutely nothing is going on and it's just consistently selling off and you're down like 80, 90 percent in the position. Believe me, I promise we have all been there. OK, and what you have to do now is learn from those mistakes, right? So now moving forward, you're going to have to, unfortunately, I know it's rough because I know everyone has a lot going on. There's only so many hours in the day. But now moving forward, next time you do pull the trigger with your hard-earned money, you're going to make sure, okay, is this actually an established company or is this like a, a hope and a prayer that we're investing in here? Do, does this company actually have revenue coming in or will it start to come in in the next maybe one or two quarters? so that we can potentially find a bottom sometime soon and bounce off this level, or is absolutely nothing going on. And unfortunately, with a situation like this, absolutely nothing is really going on. And as you see, we come back here, the company brought in 194 k apparently off estimates of over $7 million, so they seriously missed the mark on that one. And then that's what I mean, something like this. That, that, 
you, you have to, uh, again, I know I may have a little bit more knowledge than a lot of you watching, but you have to spot the Fugazi stuff happening, you know, before it happens so that you don't get sucked into it. And again, it's been nothing but downtrend, and then boom, you have a 1 for 15 reverse stock split, and obviously no one actually appreciated that, and the stock has actually broken down out of this all-time bottom trend line here, and we can see down at $3.20 off a 1 for 15 reverse stock split, this bottom trend line is now $0.45, cents, which is funny because if we come down here, market cap right now a little over $51 million, but again, they're just bleeding. They're, they're not doing any business, so... Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't know. Maybe now they started doing some business, but I think I think uh, I read 56 trucks or something. Where is it? Hold on. Hold on. Nope. Hold on. EV startup needs more cash. Okay. Ba -ba -ba. Split will be effective May 24. The investors, Lordstown had 243 million shares outstanding. Following the split, number will be roughly 16 million. Uh, ja, 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 ja. No one would split a stock they expect to go down. Reverse stock splits can have the opposite effect. Reverse splits typically happen after a period of struggle. Been down 86% over the last 12 months. Here we go. Company has struggled to produce trucks and needs more cash. Lordstown has produced 56 pickup trucks. Since the start of production, 56 trucks. So again, I'm not beating the company up. I'm glad they finally started producing vehicles. But th this is what we spoke about in the first video. You have to wait for the production to ramp up. You have to wait for actual revenue to start flowing in before you can even make your investment. You Unfortunately, you can't just buy a, you know, an IPO or a company in a specific sector just because they're in their sector. I, I, I'm telling you, in my opinion, that is not the way to do it. Look at a situation, the perfect comparison with uh, PSNY, Polestar, right? We looked at that, came out, what, 10, you know, ran up to 11 or 12, and then slowly started to pull down to seven, to six, to, to four, then dropped down to like three and a half, three and a quarter, it found that bottom, but what's the difference between that stock and this company? Well, that company now is actually producing a decent amount of vehicles, and now they have millions of dollars flowing in. So now we have to take a step back and reevaluate the chart and reevaluate the numbers to see, are we near a potential bottom? Can we really not go much lower now with revenue coming in and potentially increasing moving forward quarter over quarter, year over year? Is the stock even potentially viewed as undervalued now? And will 12, 24, 36 months from now, will the stock be worth significantly more per share than it is now? That's why something like a PSNY down there in the threes now with revenue coming in, now you can say it's a buy. Before they were producing anything and making no money and had a market cap of 20 plus billion dollars, yeah, no, you can wake up every day and just hit the short button because essentially nothing is guaranteed in the market, but a situation like that is basically guaranteed, right? Same thing with the Rivian. Came out $70, $80 a share. Stock's down into like the mid-teens now. Like, You know what I mean? These companies aren't doing anything. They, do, they deserve little to no value. And that's, again, what you're seeing here. At the end of April, the company had cash of $165 million. The company used about $46 million in cash to fund this business in the first quarter. Okay, so you got to multiply that by four, which is about all the cash they have on hand for the year's expenses just to operate. Wall Street projects the company will need more than $200 million for the remainder of 2023 if the company is to ramp up production. Some of the money might come from the partner out of Taiwan, better known as Foxconn. And, uh, yeah, basically, Lordstown received delisting notice from the exchange until mid-October to remedy the situation. Uh, so, yeah, as of right now, Lordstown Motors overall is was in a big downtrend. And then, of course, with the reverse stock splits and there's really, really light revenue coming in, it, it's unfortunately still not worth your attention, in my opinion. And I know I was betting against the stock and beating it up since the last time I made the video, but unfortunately, not really much has changed. 
And again, you know, looking in comparison to another company in the same exact sector that was going down the same exact path in PSNY, Polestar Automotive, they did, they have done the exact opposite of what Lordstown Motors has done here. So Lordstown continued to bleed, right? They, they were forced to do a reverse stock split. They, were, they probably are going to continue to go even lower and continue to hit new lows after this reverse split. And um, I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to jump ship and they're going to need like a really, really big positive catalyst headline to find the bottom and reverse the value of the stock here. And of course, more importantly, actually conduct their business. You know, a lot of people watching these videos forget about that. And I'll come out and, and say something, you know, that appears just so obvious to me. And, you know, people jumped, oh, yeah, but they got this vehicle going. And, oh, did you see the design on this? Or, you know, this guy said he's a buyer and he just sunk, uh, you know, 50 mil into it. And it's like none of that matters. People forget when you're buying shares of a company, you are an investor in the company. Why would you invest into a company that you know is overvalued, that you know is going to be to be hemorrhaging millions of dollars on their balance sheet for the next 12, 18, 24 months before maybe they start bringing in revenue and maybe can grow from that point. What, why would you invest into that? Why would you invest into that? When on one hand, you have this ridiculously speculative overvalued situation. And then on another hand, you have a company like a Goodyear Tire that is brand name in their market and is tremendously undervalued right now, in my opinion. And again, also, you're benefiting off of the EV sales because even though you're not dealing with a hemorrhaging uh, startup EV company owning shares of it yourself, you know, we saw uh, when COVID happened, obviously, when prices of new and used cars began to increase hand over fist, what happened to Goodyear Tire stock? Stock went from like $10, 11 $12 a share up to like $22, $24 a share over the course of like a 12-month period. So, that you know, that's why, again, it, unless it's like a Tesla or like a Ford, uh, unless you're buying an established dealership or, or an established uh, auto company itself, there's really no reason to buy stocks like this. But again, on the flip side, the comparison, PSNY, definitely, without a doubt, is a buy more than ride would be here. So, you know, I'm sure I may get some uh, negative responses here in the comments. And again, unfortunately, I have to say it's probably because you're an investor who's emotionally invested and, and you're very upset because again, not to toot my own horn, I, I said to stay away from it and it is down drastically from July 18th, I believe right here where I made the video. And I even called that it can climb up and break out a little bit above the top trend line before pulling back and selling off again. So, you know, I'm sorry because I know you're all probably very upset if you're involved because you're down big. But, man, I absolutely nailed this call. And um, you, you, you just got to be in the right place at the right time. You, you have to not really roll the dice. But if you do roll the dice, it has to be with extra money, money that you don't care about right? If you're a younger, newer investor, and let's say you have like 5k, right? You have $5,000. This is the last thing you should have bought. If you were involved with this stock back here, right? If you were upset when I made the video and, and it was already going down for a while and, you know, now it's going down even more and you're even more upset. You're even more upset. You know, your, your five grand is worth 500 right now. You know, that these are not the decisions you should be making. So this has to be money that you do not care about, right? So if you had 5,000, let's say, you would probably take like 10% of that, right? That's That would be a small piece of the pie, potentially something that you don't care about, especially obviously if, you know, you're also employed and you have money coming in as well. So you're going to slowly keep adding to that, you know, 5,000 investment portfolio, but a situation like this would be a very, very small amount that you can just throw in and, you know, if it works out, phenomenal. And in a situation like this, if it drops 80, 90 percent and they do a reverse stock split, it's like, yeah, whatever. 
yeah, I lost 10% at the time, you know, I lost 500, but I've been consistently adding to my investment account. And also the other 4,500 hopefully would be in more stable brand name companies that, you know, if everything worked out would have made you a couple of bucks back. So, you know, you would have been up a few hundred, even though you, you know, would be down several hundred here. So, it'd be, you know, no harm, no foul, you know? And again, you learn from your mistakes and you make better decisions moving forward. But, you know, again, um, for anyone who's potentially thinking, should you double down? Should you average in, you know, and buy more shares down here? If it was me, I wouldn't. If it was me, I wouldn't. Especially not until they potentially get uh, that funding, like the article mentioned from Foxconn out in Taiwan, or, uh, you know, anyone steps in to try to help them out. Right now, again, not worth owning in my opinion, and if you are looking for a cheap stock like this under $5 to buy over time, that's going to be you know pretty good for you. There are so many other companies, uh, in my opinion, again, PSNY, a better buy if you want to stay in the EV space. If you want another tech company, we have Fubo, Fubo TV we spoke about, phenomenal company, that's under $2.00. Uh, safe bulkers SB was putting out pretty healthy numbers there. That's another stock that's trading around like $3 and change. So there's a lot of other options out there for you. So, you know, do not feel just because it got beaten up that you should step in. Do not feel that, you know, you are like a, a stock savant that has now identified the bottom and you're going to step in that I'm telling you, that is not how you're going to do it. I'm telling you, but Hey, if you want to roll the dice with funds, you can afford, go for it. You know, and if I'm wrong and this works out, phenomenal. I, I wish you so well. You have no idea. But in reality, not worth touching right now. R-I-D-E. Sorry, Lordstown Motors. I will not be taking a ride with you. And I'm going to end it there because even switching over to stock charts, there's really nothing going on here. Looking at the daily, you can see here, <laughs> sub 30. It's been there. Oh, my God. Look at this. Just hugging the bottom benchmark on the RSI. What is this? For months, we're on the daily. I thought we were on the weekly. But for months, look at this. No one wants to buy the stock. Reason being is because there's no need to buy the stock. Somehow, MACD has been rising, though. But definitely not an indicator I would use here in this situation because, again, it's about the value, random ad. It's about the value of the overall business. And as of right now, there is no business. Even with a market cap down at 50 million, you're, you're, you're just telling me you finally sold uh, 50 vehicles and you, and you made a couple of hundred thousand dollars. It's like, you know, you're, you're lucky your market cap is still 50 million. We should bring it down to 10 million probably. But, you know, again, I'm beating it up. But you can see here just over the last several months, you know, just look at that downtrend. It's like the bull dropped in 2023 and it, it feels like 80% of all investors were like, you know what, screw this. The stock is doing anything. I'm getting out. And it's just been cratering. So, <clears throat> yeah, you know, not much going on. Uh, reverse stock split, not worth your time. Sorry. But once again, stocks by the numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comment section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Uh, like the video, thumbs up, share the video. Algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel. Uh, like the video, uh, no, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, obviously, I love seeing the community grow. And, you know, that's all on you guys. Again, about uh, over 20% of you guys are... Subscribe to the channel, which obviously is huge. Again, like I always say, I've seen other people post their uh, analytics and, and talk about their YouTube channel and videos. And usually, you know, practically everyone you see, large and small, only has about 10% of their viewers that subscribe to the channel. And this channel here is over 20% of you have subscribed to the channel. So that that honestly means so much more to me than than any potential uh, monetization that can happen down the road. You have no idea just seeing that. You know, t twice as many people are that much more appreciative of my content that they'll take a second to subscribe to the channel and, you know, support the community. It really does mean a lot if you think about it, because I'm sure you guys may, um, you know, may have formed habits of watching specific channels over and over and, you know, looking for their videos when they do post them to appear on your page and if you think about it you're probably not subscribed to all of these channels so again the fact that 20 percent of you took a moment and said nah i'm going to subscribe to this guy you know it seems like he knows what he's talking about i'm going to support this channel that that really means the world to me but all right i talk too much 
Thanks for stopping by. I wish everyone well. Stay smart, stay focused, stay sharp, stay positive. Have a good day.